Hello, and welcome to the IPFS weekly call, where we get an opportunity to find um, all the interesting things that are being built um, by our community members. And um, let's do some housework first. And can you hear me? Hello? Yes, cool. Yep. Um, if you are part of the call, if you could sign in, please. I just put in the doc. Um, just sign in and that'll be great. And um, today we're going to hear from Andre and he is going to talk about the Scusify, but, but before we talk about the Scusify, um, Ollie, our note taker, yay, thank you, Ollie, has an announcement for us, a really exciting announcement. Ah, it's time to segue now, All right. Um, hello. <laughs> Uh, so one thing that we have noticed is a recurring comment is that it's, there's a lot of surface area of IPFS and sometimes it's difficult to know where to start. So you're excited about IPFS and you want to contribute, huh? Well, we're going to try and make that easier. I mean, we're always improving the documentation, but as an extension to this call, we're going to have an office hours. So it'll be... Uh, the, there's no agenda. There's just an hour before this call every week. Um, we're going to try and get two two people from core team to be available. Uh, it'll be me uh, for the first few weeks until everyone gets really excited about it because it'll be the most fun call to be on. And uh, we're just going to be available. And so if you have started working on a PR, but you got stuck, or you are just excited about IPFS and want to contribute improvements to documentation, or just learn a bit more about how it works so that you can contribute, um, that is the call for you. And I've deliberately placed it right before this call so that it can segue nicely and be a stable weekly event that, that we all help out on. Um, beginners welcome. Uh, there is an issue, uh, I will share it in the chat. Um, it's on IPFS community repo uh, and the idea is that I will add an issue each week for for this call and to remind people that the contributor hours is available the office hours event is available um, let me just paste a link uh, into the chat um, and if there are any co existing contributors here present who want to idle on that call and help answer questions then that would be great um, if if everyone is happy and is contributing successfully and there aren't questions, I will use the time to uh, do a kind of AMA on IRC and go through the latest questions on discuss.ipfs.io. That's the plan. It's an experiment. Help me out. I think it's an awesome experiment. Thank you so much for spearheading this, Ali. Um, and this is not just for programmers, like if you are into documentation, if you're into design, then you can also be part of the call and we'll figure out and we'll show you how you can start contributing. So yay, I actually want to give that a clap. <laughs> yay. All right, now it is time for our main presentation. Um, Andre is going to walk us through Discussify. Discussify is a distributed app built on top of uh, libp2p where you can actually chat where um, chat in a browser. I used it. It was pretty cool. Um, it's pretty amazing. And uh, I can't wait to learn more about it. So without further ado, Andre, please take it away. Hello everyone, um, I, I'm sharing my screen. Can you see, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah? Okay, so before I start, um, I want to ask something, if possible, of course. So I put a link in, um, in the Discussify, sorry, in the, in the Zoom chat with the link for, for um, the extension to be installed on your Chrome browser. So if you have some time, please install it so that we can play around together like in real time, uh, while I present um, Discussify, it will be awesome, really awesome if one or two or maybe five people could uh, join, um, you know, the, a real time conversation for us to test um, Discussify. So the first thing that, that you have to do is install the Chrome extension, of course, but you also need to set up your 
uh, you port identity on your phone and that takes that might take a, f a few mi few minutes so if you if you already have it awesome it won't take a, a, a any time basically but if you haven't please please start start it already it might take like one to two minutes to to set up an account on newport or your identity on newport so anyway as portia portia said um discussify is a real-time decentralized chat or discussion platform for um the web and it's built on um, built on top of ipfs and lip 2 p um, so we actually started this back, um, I would say, half of 2018, uh, and we actually launched the first version on December, or, or maybe earlier, I think November of, of uh, the same year, basically. Um, and these applications start, on, start basically inside the working group of the dynamic data and capabilities because we wanted to not only use PeerPath as a testing bed, but also another app with, dif with different use cases to, to further uh, complement the, the, the things that we are building, we, are, we were building in the dynamic data and capabilities working group. So uh, besides having PeerPath, we also started to discussify to um, have different use cases, uh, as I said. And this, in this case, we opted for um, something like a chat application, a real-time chat application, um, because it has different, um, uh, different problems and require different solutions for some problems. Um, so yeah, we started this, this and it took, took us like three to four months to, to actually develop it. And I'm gonna actually show you, and I, I'm just talking a, bit, a little bit introducing the project to give you some time to, to actually install the application. But um, I will demo it right now using um, maybe ipfs.io website. I will actually ask uh, Pedro, uh, which, which is here uh, actually, to join the conversation in Discussify. But essentially, I will start, let me just minimize this stuff here. So I'm going to actually log out so that you can see the whole, the whole flow process. So once you, once you enable the extension, a little balloon here appears. And when you click it, it asks you, asks you to log in with your port. At the moment, I'm using, I'm using your port uh, to provide authentication and identity. But this is something that will change in the future. Actually, um, Moxie is working on a decentralized identity solution called uh, Nomius, and um, which is basically based on the, on IBM, which stands for Identity Manager, um, and and essentially, it's it's um, it's a product and a specification for you to create decentralized identities based on DIDs and verifiable credentials and and some other um, official specifications that have, that are being built by uh, the community. And Uport is actually one of the DID methods um, that, that IDM will actually use inside. So for now, I'm just going to use Uport to log in. And give me a second for me to open Uport and scan this QR code. All right. So it should log me in in a few seconds. Not working. Okay, it works now. So I'm logged in right now, and I can already see two peers. Hopefully, I think it's it's Pedro. So what you're seeing here um, is basically a, a sidebar which which has the the comment section on on the middle, and you have the ability to to add new comments. So as I said, we use lib P2P and IPFS to provide uh, the networking layer and the persistency layer as well, because the peers themselves um, basically discover, discover each other uh, using lib P2P and PubSub, but the messages that, um, that I send uh, are persisted on IPFS. So all of this um, is thank, it's made possible thanks to Peerbase. So Peerbase is a, a peer-to-peer uh, library 
that everyone can use. I think Pedro Teixeira already presented uh, presented it a few times and also gave some some workshops and, and I already gave some workshops as well. But essentially, I'm using LIP2P, which uses IPFS and LIP2P underneath to provide a peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, friendly, real-time, um, um, basically uh, to, to build applications on, on real-time peer-to-peer networking, uh, not networks. Um, uh, and and as, as I said, also peer to, uh, this, this library, the peer base, which, which was also created in, uh, in uh, the working group, the same working group, the dynamic data, uh, is very powerful. And um, basically it, it allows you to, to use CRDTs to provide conflict-free uh, replicated data structures, which I'm using here. So if I type hello here, what will happen is that this data structure will be replicated to the other peer, which I think is Pedro. Um, and if Pedro, if possible, could you reply something? So if, if Pedro, if this works out, Pedro will reply to this comment or post something. And what happens is that, and you can see it, <laughs> both comments um, are, um, were replicated among, among the two peers in a, in a, uh, in a known uh, conflict way, basically similar to the Git primitives or principles uh, because there are, there are no, no conflicts uh, unless there is and you have to solve it. But in terms of the peer base, there's no conflicts at all. Um, that's why they are conflict free. And thanks to the, the peer base and, and IPFS and lip 2 p we are seeing all, uh, all the, those technologies playing well together because the comments are being persisted on IPFS. IPFS stores the, the, actual, the actual comments. And then we have the, the, the LIP2P and the peer base layer, which you know, makes, the, uh, or makes the synchronization possible. Um, and the whole chat that, you, that we are seeing is, is, a, is as I said, um, a CRDT, which just stores the little seeds of the comments. Basically, the hello, the hello comment, the sure I'm replying comment, and, and, and whole shiny comment from Jessica is, is seeds. Uh, each one is as a content ID, and they are being fetched in parallel when a new comment arrives. Um, so in terms of the features, I can add new comments. I can reply com to comments. For instance, I can uh, reply co to a comment uh, made by Pedro. I can edit my comments something like this. Um, and also, I can delete a comment, so I will post new comments and I will delete it and this, this seems to work um, and and I think that's pretty much it basically each discussion is unique per per uh, link or per um, per link basically so if I go to another site some for instance if I go to github.com um, you'll see that the comments or the discussion is empty, basically. Um, so a few references, if you are curious about how uh, Discussify is actually implemented and, and so on, you can check um, the PM Discussify repo on GitHub. It contains basically um, a lot of information, basically it con contains the concept, uh, the concept uh, um, um, documentation about the project contains the features and so on and also the extension themselves and uh, the code base lives in two different repositories so you have the the browser extension which is you know is the code responsible for for the actual extension and then you have the style guide which is um, a set of uh, react components that power discussify the discussify browser extension we did it we did it that way because um, uh, we we wanted to make also a web a web based um, Discussify application, and also we wanted to make in the future an iframe similar to the Facebook iframe, where you can copy uh, the Facebook snippet to have comments in your website. We wanted to have that as well, so we created a style guide in order to share a lot of components that uh, we use. Um, so yeah, I think that's basically it. Uh, if you have any questions, it will be awesome if you could ask them. And I'm sorry if, if for the lack of, of um, 
of uh, you know to, to preparation about this but yeah <laughs> that was a very nice demo thank you very much thank you okay um, at this point if you have any questions or comments if you could put it in the chat that would be wonderful Any questions or comments? Let's see this. I have a question. Um, sure. Right sure. now, uh, oh, we'll get to Jim's question first. The questions are being written somewhere? Yes, they are in the chat. All right. So will you be switching to Namio? This uh, question is from Jim. Okay, will be will you be switching to Nomius? That's a question. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we have plans to switch to Nomius once once we have um, a proof of concept working. Um, essentially, Nomius what what will give us uh, out of the box uh, or the most two, the, the most important things are two things. The first one is that uh, it will allow us to sign to sign comments because at the moment uport doesn't allow you to sign data directly you need you need um, you need some sort of backend to do that for you or you need to use their credentials which is not uh, really for that purpose uh, but nomis will allow you to sign the comments so that i can be sure that a comment is made or uh, the authorship or, or the ownership of a comment is really uh, from the person that made it um, that's one of the things that the other uh, main point that Nomius will give us is that we, it will allow us to use other decentralized identity solutions or more specifically, specifically other DID methods because there are a lot of DID methods. Uh, Uport is just one. Uh, there is um, a lot more. Uh, there is, for instance, I actually will open, um, if you still see my screen, I will open the DID registry. So Uport, as you can see, is listed here in the table. It's here. Uh, it's just one of the DID methods. There are a lot of a lot of DID methods. For instance, the Verus one is also very very known in the ecosystem. You also have some others uh, from Bitcoin, the from from the Bitcoin blockchain that are uh, also well known. You have the Sovereign, which also well known, and. Nomius will allow us to integrate seamlessly with any DID method. You don't need to add specific code for um, the various types of DID methods. You just do it one way, and the Nomius will um, figure out and, and have an adapter layer that will take, uh, take care of that for you, basically. And as a follow-up question, could you um, tell us oh, more yeah. touched upon this? What is Nomius? All right, all right. So, um, I will let me put in the repo. So uh, if you want to know more about Nomius, uh, we have here a, a repo also on Shipyard. So this is something that we are working for two, two months and a half, I think. Um, so Nomius really started as IDM and IDM still exists, is still a thing, I will explain. But it all started with, a, with an RFC around identity Again, this was work being done in the, in the dynamic data and capabilities working group. Um, some people here uh, are familiar with it. I'm seeing, I'm seeing um, uh, some people, some, some known faces here. Anyway, um, basically it's all started as an RFC with a proposal to make the decentralized identity um, more easy to do in a peer-to-peer -peer manner, more specifically to integrate with PeerPad and Discussify because we really need the, need identity in the case of Discussify and also in PeerPad, PeerPad. but we, we were having difficulties with the current solutions because they are not really peer-to-peer -peer friendly. Uh, and, and, and even if they are, they are not very user-friendly because they require you to install things such as uh, extensions, for instance, MetaMask and, and whatnot. And those are things that the average internet user don't expect to do in order to interact with a, a, a regular or a standard application. So uh, we started uh, working on, on, on the IDM concept and IDM stands for Identity Manager. And what it really is, and I will quote here, 
um, is a unified or an attempt to create an unified digital wallet based on open standards that's, that aims to support multiple decentralized identities. Um, and Nomius is, uh, a, um, let's say, a concretization of that because IDM is a spec and anyone can implement their own identity wallet based on this spec. Uh, Nomius is just, is just one of those wallets because Nomius has an, um, a design and has a, a, front, a front end with, with a specific, um, you know, specific face in terms of looking, uh, uh, how it looks and how it feels. But I can, I or any, any other can implement their own identity based on the same specs. So if you are interested in knowing more, we have here the, the PM IDM repo, where we also have the concept, we have the specification, we have some, um, some diagram for you to, to explore, uh, which, which you know, entails all the, um, all the user flows of the, 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 the wallet, and you have here the work plan as well. So we are currently working on this, and if you are also interested in, in knowing or previewing how, how the application is looking like, or the wallet is looking like, we uh, host um, a bi-weekly meeting uh, every Monday, but, but I think the next one will be on Thursday because of the, the holidays and vacations uh, around, around this uh, specific time in Portugal um, right now. But I think that essentially, it's, that, that, does, does it answer your question, Jim? Or diet twitch? Yeah, I see Good. thumbs up, and I also see a story about Uport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you port deleted my old identity and now has an identification step. It only works for, okay. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Uh, I just created a new identity, but I had to use the US address. <laughs> okay. But, but, but what do you mean? The you port application deleted your old identity stored there? Yes. They, they've okay. got a new maybe, version. <laughs> maybe because you, you like, you upgraded the, the application, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, that shouldn't happen, obviously. But the thing, the thing is that your part um, as a DID method that has a, a recovery mechanism that allows you to recover your your identity. Um, that's why it's asking you for the the zip code, which you, you which you don't have, right? <laughs> Did you mention right. that IDM has a recovery method? Sorry? Did you mention that IDM has a recovery method? So, so IDM is just um, an aggregator of all the DID methods. Uport is just one. So if Uport supports a recovery message, um, method and you're using an identity or you imported an identity to IDM um, from Uport, you'll also be able to recover to recover your, your identity through IDM. But for instance, IDM also supports other DID methods. Uh, one of them is um, IPID. And IPID, uh, because it uses IPNS um, and, and IPFS, obviously, uh, and because it relies on, your, on the fact that your uh, IPNS key is your identity, basically, you can't really recover it, uh, at least rightly, because once you lose it, you lose it, you lose your identity because it's compromised. Anyone can point to another, um, to another document saying uh, who you are or something like that. So, so you can't really recover it. So it's dependent on the DID method that you, you choose when importing or when creating your identity through IDN. Awesome, thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Another thank you. And my original question was related to um, Jim's, which was um, why are you switching away from Uport? And you've already um, answered that question, which is great. So any yeah. more questions before we actually break? Going once, going twice. Okay. So I'm just showing some screens so that you can better understand what, what Nomius is. Sorry to interrupt you. 
Oh, can mm -hmm. you say that again? You're showing us screen, so say it again, please. Uh, I'm not showing you my screen. Oh, what did you say? Can you please repeat? I, I said I said that I'm just sharing as um, the a current mockup of of Nomius um, for for the people that ask it about Nomius. So this is how it looks like uh, in terms of the actual wallet. Um, so if you if you see on the left, you have your identities. Um, that you imported or created through these wallets, and you can add and you can see your profile and, and so on. That's quite nice. Thank you. Okay, so it looks like we don't have any more questions. Um, Andre, thank you very much for taking the time out to um, show us to specify and to also um, show us about IDM and. Um, this lovely um, wallet, which is like the best wallet I've ever seen. Um, thanks everyone for being here. I will see you next Monday and um, have a great week. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.